So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ChatGPT finally has the ability that was announced several months ago. ChatGPT not only has vision, it also can see, hear, and of course, speak. So, ChatGPT slash OpenAI managed to roll out this update yesterday and spoke about the new capabilities and how they are intertwined with ChatGPT as well as the various applications. One of the new applications of this is the vision and with the vision you can do a multitude of helpful things that you may have not even thought of. In this video we're going to take a look at every single application use case for ChatGPT's new abilities and exactly how the future of AI is going to transpire now that this landscape is changing so quickly. So on the OpenAI page, it says we are beginning to roll out the new voice and image capabilities in ChatGPT. They offer a new, more intuitive type of interface by allowing you to have a voice conversation or to show ChatGPT what you're talking about. In addition, if you are wondering about the rolling out of this stuff, because one thing that I do know that people want to know is, is this available right now? Now, currently parts of this are available and parts of this aren't. For example, voice isn't available right now because as you do know, ChatGPT slowly rolls this out. Usually when ChatGPT or OpenAI roll out an update, it's usually USA first and they usually roll it out to certain states first. I'm not sure exactly which states, but I do know that some do get priority and then it's usually followed by Europe and then the rest of the world. Additionally, for those in the United Kingdom, we do get it sometime after. So it might be a month after, or it might be three weeks after the first two week period. In terms of which users it's going to be to, it says we're rolling out voice and images in ChatGPT2 Plus and enterprise users over the next two weeks. So OpenAI have shown us a small demo in which you can use voice to engage in back and forth conversation with your assistant. Now, I do think that this is going to be really good because this is something that is quite like Siri, only it's much more advanced. Now, let me know what you think about this demo. What you're about to hear is someone, a normal person, a normal human speaking into the chatbot first. And then what you're about to hear is ChatGPT speaking back using one of its natural language voices. I'm not sure which service they're using to use these types of voices. It doesn't sound like Eleven Labs, but it does sound pretty decent. It sounds a lot better than Siri. But let me know what you think of the demo, if you think it's good, and if you're going to be using it, because I certainly we want to hear a bedtime story. Tell us a story about the super duper sunflower hedgehog named Larry. Start with telling us a little bit about him. Larry was a unique hedgehog unlike any other. He had bright sunflower petals instead of spines. Residing in Meadowville, Larry spread joy and color wherever he rolled. People cherished his radiant presence. What was his house like? Larry's house was a cozy burrow beneath a sunflower field. Inside, the walls shimmered with golden petal pattern. Natural light streamed through tiny sunflower windows, creating a warm, glowing ambience. It was a sun-kissed haven. Who is his best friend? His best friend was Luna, a luminescent firefly. At night, while Larry's petals rested, Luna's glow kept them company. Their bond was special. Larry brought sunshine by day, and Luna, starlight by night. Together, they illuminated Meadowville. Okay, it's bedtime for Larry. What does he do to go to sleep? Larry curls up in his petal blanket, letting its softness embrace him. Luna sings a gentle lullaby, her glow dimming to mimic twilight. The scent of sunflower fills the air, and Larry drifts into peaceful dreams. Good night, Larry. So from that demo, you can see exactly why this is really useful. Sometimes you do have an idea and you just want to hit the record button and then simply talk to ChatGPT rather than simply typing out everything. Now, one thing that I do know as well is that this is likely to be very, very accurate. This is because ChatGPT has a special model that they are most likely going to be using, which can identify every single word in the human dictionary and is trained on a large data set of human audio. So another thing you can see on the web page here is that ChatGPT actually comes with five different voices. There is Sky, there is Juniper, there is Cove, there's Ember, and there is Breeze. So we have five different voices. Each one is slightly different. You can choose which one that's going to read you your text or talk to you. Whichever one you find the most pleasing, you can then use. I think in the future, what might happen is that maybe they might allow third party applications for you to have their voice, but I'm guessing for now, this is all they have to offer. It would be cool if ChatGPT allowed users to be able to customize these voices, maybe by gender, by age, by pitch, by tone, because that would be something that would really make these AIs as personal to us as possible. Now, if you do want to use voice, it might be rolled out now, but I'm not sure because I don't use the mobile app. So it does say to head to your settings, new features, and then opt into voice conversations. Then tap the headphone button 
and then choose your preferred voice out of five different voices. And like we stated before, we also use Whisper, our open source speech recognition system, to transcribe your words into spoken text. And this is gonna be something that makes AI much faster in terms of getting your information and of course, relaying it back to you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the different five voices and let me know which one you think is going to sound most appealing to you. Once in a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten, Milo, under the shade of an old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle, you're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yes, a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Once in a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten, Milo, under the shade of an old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle, you're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yes, a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Once in a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten Milo under the shade of an old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle, you're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yes, a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Once in a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten Milo under the shade of an old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle. You're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yes, a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Once in a tranquil woodland, there was a fluffy mama cat named Lila. One sunny day, she cuddled with her playful kitten Milo under the shade of an old oak tree. Milo, Lila began, her voice soft and gentle, you're going to have a new playmate soon. Milo's ears perked up, curious. A new playmate? Lila purred. Yes, a baby sister. Milo's eyes widened with excitement. A sister? Will she chase tails like I do? Lila chuckled. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you? Milo nodded eagerly, already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. Then of course we have images. So it says you can now show ChatGPT one or more images. Troubleshoot why your grill won't start, explore the contents of your fridge to plan a meal, or analyze a complex graph for work-related data. To focus on a specific part of your image, you can use the drawing tool in our mobile app. Now, this is something that I didn't expect from ChatGPT because it wasn't actually demoed in the research paper. The drawing tool is something that is going to be a game changer because it means that in an image, you can highlight a specific area in order to give ChatGPT a sense of what you're trying to look at. Now, I think this is really cool because a lot of the times when you're using stuff like Bing Chat, and although it is of course good, the problem is, is that sometimes it struggles to locate certain things within the image and infer the context from them. So from the actual demo, what we can see here, someone's taken a picture of their bike and you can see it says, help me lower my bike seat. Now I'm glad they actually managed to do this right here where you can see this is a focus area to focus on a certain part for ChatGPT because a lot of the times, if you are taking an image of something, you largely don't know what you're taking an image of and you largely mistake certain things for other things. So what you're actually able to do is point out certain things and then ask it questions about it. You can also see that ChatGPT manages to respond and it's taking that, no, that's not a lever, it's a bolt. You'll need this to loosen it. And it went on further to describe the exact type of tool you need and of course, by inputting your manual as a PDF and taking a picture of the toolbox, ChatGPT was able to say, yes, you have the right tool or no, you have the wrong tool. And I think that this has a vast, vast range of applications so long as this works. And I'm pretty sure they took a very long time to let this out because I'm pretty sure they wanted to ensure that this was really, really safe to use in a wide range of applications. Now, 
Now, for those <coughs> now, a question that might come up is that some people might be wondering, is this the same as Bing Chat? And I have to say, no, this isn't going to be the same as Bing Chat because Bing Chat is limited not only in its responses, but you can't highlight certain things. And usually what's wrong with Bing Chat is that you can't prompt it further and ask it certain questions about certain images. It seems like Bing Chat was a very limited test run of a tool that was obviously going to be rolled out into ChatGPT. And we're now seeing just how good this really is. Now, another thing as well, and this is just something small, is that they did name this ChatGPT V, and that did confuse some people because they did think it meant that this was GPT-5. In fact, it isn't. But I do think that this is definitely GPT-4.5 or 4.4. This just isn't GPT-4 anymore because the things that we're now getting are definitely a step above what we were initially told that GPT-4 was going to be. So I do think that as they stated before, as they're upgrading this system, we're going to eventually continue and continue until the point we get to GPT-5. It's not going to be some giant leap. It's largely just going to be an upgraded version of GPT-4 along with some video creation capabilities.